Here we go, I got part two of season two of Konosuba all whipped up and ready to consume for those eager viewers out there looking for a poorly made YouTube video to platonically suck along. When we last left off, Kazuma has metamorphosed into Kotatsu Man due to his sudden increase in wealth. Sometime in the past, darkness and him break the news of Vanir's explosive demise to Wiz with sorrow in their hearts. He's just chilling though. Vanir gets a nice snack from Darkness' embarrassment and reveals that his mortality is thanks to his extra lives, introducing himself as Vanir II, Electric Boogaloo. Free from the Demon King's employment, he may now roam the earth to do whatever he pleases, which just happens to be managing Wiz's failing magic shop as a merchant. That's where Kazuma reveals that he and Vanir have been making Japanese products for the denizens of this world to purchase. Kotatsu Man refuses to return to adventuring, fighting off his companions, who remain determined to drag him and Aqua back into the fray. They fail to bring deliverance to their mission and decide to just toss him out the window. After being torn from his nest, Kazuma gets a gear upgrade, a katana, and a full plate armor. This guy is pleased. Oh, yeah. Kazuma looks like a glistening beetle and cannot move. He dons his new weapon, preparing to dramatically exit the store. It's much too long and unwieldy, even though he can clearly fit through there. Later, Kagu is upset by the shortening of his cool sword. Megumin eats a bean. The rest of the party found a quest. Some lizards are being a nuisance with their mating rituals and must be slain for the greater good of all humanity. Kazuma flirts while trying to come up with a cool name for his sword. Megumin names it Chun Chun Maru, which vaguely resembles the Japanese word Chin Chin. Kazuma tries to reject her suggestion, but the talisman has already determined Chun Chun Maru's fate. The time has come to genocide the lizard peoples as their adventurers take their positions. Kazuma reveals his fairly solid plan and the battle commences. Aqua immediately decides to deviate from the strategy strategy, redirecting the stampede to their location. They quarrel. Aqua has a mental breakdown from the verbal abuse. Kazuzumo snipes the king lizard, but the pack's fervor only increases. Megumin doesn't have enough magical power to cast her explosive spell due to being drained earlier by the evil Kotatsu man. Right. Darkness and Aqua are swallowed by the herd, while Kazuma goes for the queen kill. The lizard's corpse instantly kills him. It's heaven, again. Eris gently scolds him for dying again. Kazuma's concerns about his companions are relieved by Eris's omnipotence. He tries to make idle conversation by asking Eris about her hobbies, accidentally falling deeper into love with Eris's good girl sensibilities. She states that she sometimes visits the surface to have fun, stating coyly that it's a secret that must be kept between the two of them. There are some interesting theories behind Eris's identity on the surface, and uh, since I'm here to explain, I'll just do it vaguely. Aqua casts a resurrection spell, interrupting their conversation. Kazuma is scolded for not wanting to return and defeat the Devil King. He contemplates the absurdity of achieving that goal with his triad of troubled women, while Aqua insults Eris's tiny boobers. Kazuma tries to reject the resurrection, insisting he be reborn as a little baby. Megumin begins to lewdly defile Kazuma's corpse. He immediately requests to be sent back as a result. Upon his return, Megumin berates him for attempting to leave them behind, remaining adamant in her decision to violate late Kazuma's body. Later that night, he finds that his Johnson was labeled the Holy Sword Excalibur as revenge for insulting Chun Chun Maru's name. Aqua makes tea, but is purified into hot water by her overflowing holy powers. Megumin is distraught by the pair's creepy, distinguished behavior. Aqua prepares more tea, which is hot water once again. Darkness informs Megrometer about the events of not too long ago. Sometime in the past, Kazuma yearns for revenge over his graffitied body. His wrath leads him to Veneer, who has broken into their house to inquire about more inventions. Aqua's barrier was trampled on in the process of breaking and entering. The goddess and demon predictably cannot get along as they continue to insult each other. They duel. Vanir turns into poop as a defense mechanism. After some time, Vanir offers to purchase the intellectual property of Kazuma's inventions for $30 million or a stipend of $1 million a month. Kazuma is pleased. Aqua chases the demon away. Back in the present, the concept of wealth has wormed its way into Kazuma and Aqua's personalities. Kazuma states frankly that adventuring has only resulted in being killed, so a comfy merchant's life is the superior option. He goes on to defend himself by explaining how he could hire jacked individuals with his massive wads of cash and instruct them to defeat the Demon King. Aqua is impressed by his ingenuity. Megumin is enraged. Darkness is aroused at the thought of Kazuma becoming increasingly pathetic. Kazuma soothes the upset Megumin by insisting that he is still recovering from his death. She responds by recommending they go to 
Arkenretia, a hot spring city. As a Japanese man, Katsuman cannot resist the temptation of a heated open air bathing, and they prepare to head out. While waiting on the others, Kazuma visits Veneer to tell him about the vacation. Wiz looks hotter than usual. It turns out that Wiz has a bad habit of purchasing lots of dangerous magical artifacts. Her crispiness is the result of a punishment for that habit. Veneer requests that Kazuma bring Wiz along. Meanwhile, Yun Yun attempts to visit the group's headquarters, finding no one home. Wiz begins to dissipate, but is refurbished from darkness's vitality. The wagon Aqua decided to hire in Kazuma's absence is transporting a singular baby red dragon. Interesting. Aqua repeatedly loses at rock, paper, scissors and has to sit in the back. Kazuma is berated for being naturally lucky. Aqua is berated for being a useless goddess of debt. The journey to Arkenretia begins at last. Kazuma reflects on how pleasant the journey has been while admiring the scenery. Sometime later, he spots a suspicious dust cloud heralding the arrival of a pack of creatures called Kite Hawks, whose problematic mating ritual is to play chicken with hard objects, and they are approaching worryingly fast. The caravan master informs Kazuma that there may be adamantite nearby, causing the animals to go nuts. It would seem that the wagon contains a crusader boasting a full set of adamantite armor. That very crusader fidgets with anticipation. Kazuma responds by taking responsibility for Darkness's hardness and getting involved. Darkness heroically runs out to pull aggro on the ostriches. The caravan guards are impressed by her gallant courage. One of them attempts to help, but Darkness intercepts his projectile ropes. Kazuma apologizes profusely for the trouble his pervert has caused. Dark Darkness is blue-balled by the ostrich's narrow misses. I guess the stampede isn't too much of a threat with her out there all tied up. The birds keep coming, though. Kazuma quickly devises a strategy to deal with them. He ties Darkness to the back of the wagon, with her consent, and they begin to gallop full speed towards a cave. Darkness is elated by the new pleasure of being tied up and dragged. Wiz makes a stinky purple hole, which eats some of the creatures. Aqua spams heal on Darkness, who is writhing around in ecstasy, and buffs Kazuma. The driver does a sick drift with his horses. Kazuma tosses darkness into the cave like a sack of beans, luring the birds to their doom. Megumin blows up the circle full of big dumb chickens. Later that night, they have a lavish meal cut from their spoils. As Kazuma is profusely thanked for his vital service to the caravan, he has trouble accepting due to his party being the very thing that caused the incident to begin with. The wizards do party tricks while Kazuma fixes darkness's breastplate. Even later that night, the campsite is awakened by the shuffling of undead. I think Kazuma's party is forever doomed to a trouble. Aqua does a massive purifying, taking out all the zombies at once, and almost exercising Wiz as well. Kazuma repents to himself, as Aqua is praised thoroughly by the travelers. A reward is once more thrust at him, but is turned down again. Meanwhile, Yun Yun attempts to visit the party's headquarters with an entire roast pig, finding no one home. The group of adventurers finally make it to the City of Water. It's pretty nice looking at a glance. They dismount from the wagon, parting ways with their driver and that little dragon. Aqua reveals that Arkenretia is home to her religious sect, the Axis cult. Kazuma is shook. They are immediately hounded by members of her order, trying to fervently convert them to their faith. They decide to flee to an inn immediately. Wiz has a near-death experience, but is revitalized before perishing. Kazuma reflects on whether Aqua has gone to cause trouble, and then Darkness and Kazuma wander around town. A member of the Axis cult attempts to violently scam them into joining their religion. Darkness chases her off by presenting her heiress crest. She also finds a new kink. They are once more accosted by Axis members, of which Darkness repulses, and several more times. Kazuma is empty. Darkness contemplates moving to this town after being degraded further. Sometime later, in an alleyway, they almost get scammed by a sweet-looking little child who needed help. The pent-up rage hiding from within Kazuma's husk propels forth, tearing the child's paper to shreds. Kazuma visits the Axis megachurch to unload his wrath upon the Pope. He finds Megumin traumatized in the corner and is informed that Darkness is currently being stoned by children. She's elated by the thoroughness of the citizen's religious persecution. Meanwhile, Aqua has been embracing her deification by listening to people's confessions. Kazuma attempts to admonish her for allowing her cult to proselytize so aggressively, but is ignored. He tries a different tactic by confessing that he broke Aqua's favorite cup, stole her alcohol, and posted a recruitment poster for an Arist sect priest. Aqua attacks him, 
They're cool though. Sometime later, this guy is tempted by Eris' bountiful chest. Aqua sluices tears of joy from the wretched sinner by forgiving his transgressions and urging him to repeat the mantra. Eris pads her chest. Her follower is greatly inspired. Back at the inn, the party reflects on their day while Kazuma heads to the mixed bath alone. At the hot spring, a red-haired lady and bearded muscle man converse while Kazuma pervs on the naked lady. She flees from embarrassment. This guy contemplates genocide. Kazuma finally finds a moment to creep on the women by violating the sacred rules of the onsen. They are cautious, understanding what kind of man he is. He remains stealthy so as not to arouse suspicion. The girls discuss Kazuma's positive traits, almost causing him to retreat from guilt. Megumin begins to presumably fondle darkness for having large breasts, sending Kazuma into a sudden lecherous frenzy. Their strategy worked wonders, catching him in the act of eavesdropping. The two sides fling stuff at each other as a result. Later, Aqua injures Wiz with her tears. She was kicked out of the baths for accidentally purifying the water and calling herself a goddess. Before being excommunicated, she was informed that the hot spring's quality has been mysteriously dropping recently. Aqua theorizes that the Devil King is attempting to sabotage her forces by whittling away the Axis cult's source of income. None of her companions are willing to help due to her religion's terrible reputation. Aqua incapacitated Wiz from her tears, so she is of no assistance either. Later, every tourist in town contemplates genocide. When Wiz arrives, fully recovered, presumably scaring that guy away, Aqua causes a scene in the middle of town, spreading her conspiracy theory from earlier. She urges the populace to avoid the hot springs in the meantime, but is verbally attacked for purifying everything. In a panic, she reveals her true identity, sending the citizens into a righteous defense of their goddess by chasing away the heretic with stones. Later, Aqua continues to produce radiant tears. Her precious followers are unwilling to see reason from their goddess. They even formed a militia, believing that our protagonists are servants of the Devil King, and now seek to flay and eat the adventurers alive, probably. The party escapes dramatically by some anime of voodoo. Aqua suggests that they purify the water as they flee from the crowd. At the entrance to the spring, the guards are members of the Eris faith and refuse to let Aqua in. She attempts seduction, but fails. She threatens them with harassment from the Axis cult, revealing that she's the blue-haired hooligan they were told to keep out. Megumin takes over negotiations by presenting Lady Lady Dustiness for La Latina. Darkness is resistant to the robbery, but they eventually extract her family crest and make it through the gate. The spring water is visibly befouled by the devilish magics. The adventurers hurry to the source, finding the enraged bearded muscle man dipping his nasty fingies in a puddle. He fails at negotiations due to being recognized by Wiz. It's Hans San, the deadly poison slime. Wiz tries to be known while he attempts to escape. There is no escape for evildoers, however. He becomes upset at Wiz for getting in his way and being a nuisance. She doesn't understand. Kazuma cuts negotiations short by drawing his mighty weapon, Chun Chun Maru, and declaring himself to be the slayer of many powerful enemies. Hans introduces himself formally as a leader of the Devil King's army. Kazuma is shook. Okay. Darkness and Megumin explain how slimes are the toughest of foes due to their resistance to physical attacks and deadly digestive enzymes. Kazuma is shook. He immediately attempts to flee, but at the other end of their fate resides an angry pack of religious zealots. Kazakhstan and Megatron both decide that the Axis cult isn't worth saving. Aqua is distressed and goes to solo the slimy raid boss, causing Kazuma to give in. Hans is fervent in his quest to destroy the hot spring, revealing how he already ate the overseer. Wiz goes super Saiyan, stating that her condition for neutrality was that no non-combatants were to be killed. She recites poetry about life and death in regards to being involved in war, dramatically coming to the conclusion that her involvement is a natural consequence. Hans determines that he must fight back to survive at this point, metamorphosing into his true form, Darth Blobby. His goop flings wantonly through the air. Aqua quickly goes to prevent the hot spring from being completely contaminated as the zealots finally arrive. They throw soap and heal the puddle. Darkness saves a little girl, but is brushed away like yesterday's supper. Megumin begins to channel explosion, morally finding herself unable to follow through due to the possibility of contaminating the whole mountain. Kazuma quickly comes up with a sneaky plan to defeat the jelly man. Aqua is nearly consumed. However, Kazuma grabs aggro at the perfect moment. Megumin begins to cast, while Wiz prepares her own magics. Kazuma jumps into a massive hole and dies horribly within Han's nasty jello. Megumin skeletonizes the slime 
time with their always impressive conflagration, while darkness prevents any unnecessary deaths. Wiz finishes Hans off by ensnaring him in a gigantic crystalline prison and shattering him to pieces before running out of wizard juice. Not so fast, Hans remains existent. Aqua's impassioned god blow, combined with the fervent hedonistic chanting of her psychotic religious sect, is able to congeal the perfect amount of holy energy required to at last slay another general of the Demon King's army. She proves her divinity by doing so. Sometime later, Kazuma monologues about the resolution of their battle. The populace was not pleased by their hot spring turning into regular water, but the threat was dealt with. Kazuma was presumably resurrected with no problems. Wiz almost perished due to the purification magic again, but has yet to cross the river Styx. As the credits roll, the familiar faces of Axel greet our protagonists. Yun Yun finally gets to visit. Kazuma rests upon his throne, content with the life God has blessed him with, and that's the end of Season 2 of Konosuba. Hello my precious viewer, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. I have a Patreon that I feel obliged to advertise, but don't feel obligated to sign up. Thank you for watching again. Uh, bye.